For today's episode, we are going to be covering how to dye with willow branches. Come join me. So I wanted to try out dyeing with willow branches for a couple of reasons. One is a major storm had come through and some of these larger branches of the trees have been snapped off and the gardeners were coming to chip them anyway. So it seemed like a good opportunity to forage. And I also like the idea of exploring dyeing with uh, plants and mushrooms that can heal. So in this case, uh, willow bark contains salicylic acid, which is used to numb pain. A willow refers to trees in the Salix genus, which are a deciduous shrub and tree found in many temperate regions. Now, when you are out foraging fresh materials like this, you tend to want to go for a 10 to 1 ratio to start. That's 10 times the weight of plant to the fiber that you're going to be dyeing. Um, I wanted to chop them up a bit. I got a sturdy pair of scissors and I wanted to chop up the branches, um, not just the leaves themselves, because there is that inner cambium, that inner bark layer um, that has a lot of dye potentials in a lot of different plants. And I wanted to see if willow was the same. So while 10 to 1 is um, sort of standard to start from, don't be afraid to go over that, even 20 to 1 or 30 to 1, if you're using something like in this case, I'm foraging something that's going to be chipped up anyway. So the next step in natural dyeing is to introduce your fiber to a metal such as uh, aluminum, which is found in alum, or iron, which is not found in ferrous sulfate. So why do we do this extra step? It allows that dye to penetrate more deeply, take on richer colors, and stabilize that color better so the fiber can be washed and go into the sunlight with less fading. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this step. If you want to know more about mordanting, you could definitely take a look at the video I did on acorns where I do a deep dive into the mordanting process. Um, once you've heated your fiber with the metals, you want to soak your fiber. So anytime you are dyeing with fiber, you want to soak it in water ahead of time, about sort of 20 minutes or so. Um, what that does is it allows the water to penetrate into the fiber. So when you add your fiber to your dye pot, it just sinks in more easily. Um, I tend to soak my alum mordanted fiber, which is one on the left, and the iron mordanted fiber, which is on the right, the darker one. Soak those separately so we don't get contamination and then splotchy colors. So now it's time to turn our attention to the dye, dye pot itself. Now I tend to use these mesh bags. You get them at the paint store. Um, they're fairly inexpensive and you can reuse them a ton. By putting them in first and then the plant material for simmering, you can remove the bag and the plant material all at once and your dye pot is ready for your fiber. If you don't have a bag like this, um, don't worry about it. You can skip this step. It just means when you're drying your fiber at the end, you might have to give it some shakes and then pull out some of the plant material. Now you can add your hot water. What you're looking for is just enough water. Um, that your fiber is going to be allowed to move around, uh, keeping in mind that some of it is obviously going to be evaporating during the process. Um, one of the things that you're watching for too is you don't want to ever boil your plant material. You really want to just have it at a simmer. In Celsius, it's about 80 degrees, which I think is about 126 Fahrenheit. Um, and you'll notice too, when you first add your fiber, or sorry, first add your vegetable matter in, it's gonna float on the surface. But as you simmer, it tends to sink into the pot. And then here it is, we've simmered it for a full hour. We've let it soak overnight and cool. Um, and that allows us to add our fiber without too much of a temperature shock. Um, and I also find when I'm removing the bag, I kind of give it extra squeeze just to really try and get every single molecule of dye potential out um, that I can. Um, and I, because I've allowed it to dry too, I'm not too worried about uh, the temperature or getting hurt. Um, so at this stage, it's all ready to go. I squeeze out my fiber um, from the jars and I'm going to add it in. As you can see, there's the one skein of the alum, which is uh, the white wool, and then the one skein that's been mordanted with iron, which should go much darker. So at this stage, I'm just going to kind of push it around. I'm trying to get the fiber to really soak down into that dye pot. And I'm going to, once again, bring it back up to a simmer. Um, at this stage, I usually simmer for about an hour. Um, and then we're going to let it cool. Um, I did notice it was a little bit pale. So when it was cooling overnight, I actually brought the bag 
back on top. And again, this is just to ensure I'm uh, allowing sort of maximum dye exposure to that fiber. Um, and now that I've let it cool overnight, uh, it's safe again to reach in and have a look at the colors that I've achieved. And I did end up with, um, I would say like a cool medium yellow um, and then more of a, of a slate brown um, chocolatey slate brown so I was super happy with the results I do think um, I used 10 to 1 I think a 20 to 1 would have given me a little bit more of a punchier yellow but I think it's pretty good I think that uh, in terms of exploring the dye potential of a healing plant uh, it was kind of fun I think it would be fun to make something for somebody who was maybe suffering with some pain issues um, just as a way to say that I was thinking about them um, I hope that you like this video. Um, feel free to like and subscribe for more videos from History Science Fiber. Thanks so much for watching.